go. And um, so I'm going to ask everyone who is not uh, speaking or having a speaking part right now mute. to mute okay. your device or Got your it. computer. And uh, Michael, if you would blow the shofar. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kavod Malkuto Leolam Vayed Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be his name, whose glorious kingdom is forever and ever. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kedeshanu BaMitzvotav, Vetzivanu LaSot BeDevrei Torah. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who sanctifies us with thy commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves in the words of the Torah. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, today we have uh, Sunil, and um, I'm looking forward, and Sheila, Sunil and Sheila, and welcome. And uh, we're just wanting to encourage you as you share with us today, bless you as you uh, give us the word and, and let us know more about yourselves today. So uh, Sunil and Sheila. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Pastor and Marta and everybody else in attendance. Here's the best part about uh, Zoom. We all see each other. The downside about being at a church, we see each other's back first. So this is a good thing, too, uh, although we like uh, to have that physical face-to-face -face interaction one day soon. Uh, and thank you for this opportunity uh, so Sheila and I can share what God has done continues to do and uh, we are just excited to be called the children of God and um, I just don't want this to be a story I want to see want you all to see the redemption of Christ that is alive and lives forever and ever until Yeshua comes so I'll let Sheila start <laughs> okay, I'm going to adjust this because I'm reading notes um we just felt to share our testimony of what brought us to this point. And I have to say my testimony is lifelong because truly I believe uh, God called me even before I was born as he did all of us. And so the scripture I want to start with is Galatians 1.15. He set me apart before I was born and called me by his grace. I was not born into a Christian home. I was born into a very loving home. Uh, that had high moral standards. I am the youngest of five children. Uh, my two oldest sisters died before I was born. And I think because of that, it turned my parents away from any faith in God. They, I would say they had an element of faith, um, but it, it totally turned them away. And in fact, my father went so far away, he was very interested in black magic and Satanism. Uh, he would read the books. Uh, he always told us children that it was real and don't dabble in it. But I always had an unhealthy curiosity with the spirit realm. I will say that. Uh, my sister, um, as she got older, she would read tarot cards and she did Ouija boards. And as I said, the spirit realm fascinated me. So I'm just going to move what I'm doing. Uh, I married at quite a young age, not to this amazing man here. Uh, it was not a good marriage. It was a marriage of abuse and infidelity. But how did I become a believer? I was living in a small village in Scotland. I had two children at that time. Uh, the oldest was four, Cherie, and the youngest was just a few months old. And a neighbor asked if they could take my oldest daughter to a children's church on a Wednesday night. Well, being the good mother that I am, 
I thought, great, I'll send her to this little church and I get a bit of alone time with me and the new baby. Well, she would go to this little church and then as time passed, I had to buy her a children's Bible. Okay. Then I had to read her some scripture passages. <sighs> Fair enough. She had to memorize a little passage. And one day she was sitting on my knee. I'm going to get emotional. And she said, when I die, am I going to heaven? And my answer was the pad answer. All good little girls go to heaven. But then she said, when you die, are you going to heaven? And I couldn't answer her. And she began to cry and, and said, I don't want to be there if you're not going to be there. And I remember lying in a bathtub and thinking, I can't get clean. What if she's right? So that played on my mind. But fast forward, uh, lots of things happened. I will be honest, God has weaved his hand through every area of my life. And I know that looking back, but we'll fast forward about a year. And I was talked into going to this little church where my oldest daughter, age four, was going. And uh, we slipped in. The church had started. We slipped into the back row of this tiny little village church. And I started laughing and sniggering. People had their hands lifted in worship. I'd never seen anything like it. Um, laughing, sniggering until the pastor spoke. And I don't know what happened. Something snapped inside. And I began to sob. I didn't know why. And so when the service was over, I bolted out the door and I said, I am never going back there again. But I felt like Father God was chasing me. Didn't matter where I went, didn't matter what I looked at, I could see him. I thought, I see you in creation. Are you, are you for real? Uh, time again passed. And eventually I began to attend that little church. One Sunday morning, the pastor said there would be a visiting pastor coming from Canada. He would come in the evening and he was going to talk on the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, now, at that time, the husband that I had was OK with me going to church once on a Sunday, but not twice. So I had to make up a lie to get out and get to that church service in the evening. I have to say that Canada, I'm ashamed to say, I really didn't know much about Canada. It's quite shameful. I assumed everyone was a lumberjack, wore snowshoes, or uh, had those hats with the flaps. That was my uh, image of Canada. So anyway, along I went, I went to that evening service and the pastor spoke. His name was Pastor Whiteman. By the end of the sermon, he asked if anyone would like to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, I had no intention of doing anything, but unknown to me, God had my hand on a string and up it went. And down I went to the front and fully received my salvation and the power of the Holy Spirit on me. It was an amazing experience. I actually felt as though someone took a jug of oil and poured it over my head. That's what it felt like. Um, truly, the grass did seem greener after that. Um, my life forever changed for the better. It gave me such a hunger to find out more about this wonderful new love affair that I had with Yeshua. And over a period of time, my sister came to know the Lord. She burned her tarot cards and her Ouija boards. To this day, she is fully saved. My mom became fully saved in the Lord, turned her life totally around. An aunt came to full salvation. Time passed. I'm now the mother of four children. And the life that I thought was getting better actually went from worse to much worse. More abuse, lots of infidelity. Uh, now, at that time as a family, we, we, traveled, uh, we traveled around the world a little bit. We lived in the USA and Italy. And then we finally returned to Scotland. And I will say out of the many churches that I visited, I always felt something was not quite right. Something was missing, like a piece of the puzzle was missing. So after 10 years away, I returned to Scotland and I returned to that same little village church where I received my salvation and the power of the Holy Spirit. But sadly, that church had undergone a split because the pastor was now leaning more towards a messianic message. But I loved it. I was drinking it in. Years passed and my marriage ended. And that was an incredibly difficult time. I was now on my own with four children. I had very little support. And in the natural, there is actually no way financially I should have got through it. But Yeshua faithfully kept us. He really did. It was amazing. 
a scripture I held on to, and there were many scriptures. I would stick them on mirrors, stick them on cupboard doors. Isaiah 43, uh, 1 to 2. But now thus says Adonai, the one who created you, O Jacob, the one who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Or through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, nor will the flames burn you. And as I said, that scripture held true for me. In fact, without the word of God and without my faith, I don't know how I could have managed. I'm going to pause there and Sunil's going to take over. And so I came from a family that um, I was adopted into. So I'm grateful for God for that. Otherwise, I would be a statistic by now. Uh, back in the days in India, you know, there was not much opportunity. So I'm grateful to God for that. But my adopted parents were only second generation Christians. So my grandparents were uh, Hindu Brahmins, uh, high priests in their religion. And they got, got to know Yeshua and they committed their lives to live for him for the rest of their lives. They were also pioneers in bringing the gospel to Tibet. Uh, Tibet had never seen uh, or heard about Yeshua. So with all that lineage, uh, I still had no interest. I was not influenced by it, although I heard a lot about Yeshua and the works of God and the mighty hand of God. I saw it in front of me. I saw, saw it on a daily basis because where there is great evil, there is great power of God manifested. And I used to laugh at all these believers. I thought they're the most ridiculous people on the planet. And then one day, and back in those days, when you were in grade 11 and 12, it was a separate school. And uh, my principal son said to me, are you saved? And I thought that was the most absurd question to ask. Whilst I'm standing, breathing and living, why is he asking me that question? And then he followed up with uh, uh, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that uh, uh, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have ever everlasting life. And that caught my attention. And uh, what did that mean to me? Would that mean I would have more hope? Would that mean that my future was going to be secure uh, in, in this uh, uh, God that's called Yeshua? Uh, is that what it is? And so that night when I went to bed, a force just pulled me down. And I went on my knees and I surrendered my life to Christ. I don't know. It wasn't an intention. I didn't do it on purpose. It was an incredible force that put me down. And I just, for the first time as a young man, I could truly say I cried. I cried a healthy cry. But the cry was more about why would you love me when I was unlovable? Why would you care for me when I didn't deserve to be cared? But his grace is truly sufficient. And so I just took on board. I had simple faith, simple faith. Like a child, I just accepted everything that I could understand in my early years of knowing Yeshua. And um, I thought things are going to be really good. And uh, by the time I was about 17, uh, my mother passed away. My father had left the house, so we were on our own. When my mom passed away, uh, she passed away in a train. And uh, I got kicked out uh, and I was arrested for the suspicion of murdering my mother. And all along, I was petrified, scared, but I believed Yeshua. I believed that he will take care of me. I believed on uh, what I had read in John chapter 1, verses uh, 1 to 4, in the beginning 
was the word and the word was with God and and the word uh, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life and that life was the light of all mankind. And I really held on to it. Uh, my world seemed like it was caving in, getting arrested. Uh, I just didn't know what to do. But I had no afraid. I wasn't afraid at all. I was absolutely uh, believing that God is going to come through. And I never in those moments asked, why am I deserving this? Why am I going through? I just said, Father, thank you. You are a father to the fatherless. Therefore, you are my dad and you're going to help me through this. And eventually I was able to get a uh, home and be able to uh, uh, deal with the things that I needed to deal with. And later on, I realized how much Yeshua was with me. And Psalm 46, 1 to 3 says, God is our refuge and strength and everlasting help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar from and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. I mean, that was a mountain I was going through and I became instantaneously homeless. Uh, and as you all know, even now and in, even in the past, there is no social services in India. So essentially I was in the streets begging, living from all the people's kindness, and uh, it was a very difficult time, yet I still held on to knowing that Yeshua is my everything. And circumstances didn't change right away. And I honestly believe that was my foundation being dug deeper and deeper in Yeshua. So for the things that I will face in the future, I will not waver whatsoever. And so I, I came to Canada eventually uh, when I was about 21 or so. And then, uh, you know, I was also married. And unfortunately, there was infidelity. And that just tore the marriage apart. But my faith in Yeshua never changed. I was just in him. And I knew that... Uh, there was no other way to turn. And then I asked Yeshua, give me opportunities to, to have a business. And I wanted to be in business and do really well for myself. And, uh, and amazingly, God provided. I started a petrol business uh, with zero money. And God's favor was on me. Everything was just lining up. I actually used to own the McCallum Esso uh, years ago, and I had about three, three or four uh, petrol stations. And God just uh, was so, so good to me. And um, and then my focus changed. Yet Yeshua loved me, and my focus was too selfish. I became money hungry and I didn't heed to God's warning and that got all taken away. And Sheila said to me this, and when the business was completely done, Sheila said to me, it's the best thing that happened to you. And I couldn't understand that for that moment. I said, how could you say that? I've lost everything. And then as I pondered several weeks later, um, I realized it was the best thing and that has continued the best thing ever for me because it focused on how much I needed God. Yeshua is my all, not the money, not the business, not the accolades, not the titles, but Yeshua, he is my all, my everything. And then something amazing happened. 
or before the business. <laughs> um, so we're going to backtrack a little bit. So I've been on my own and on my own, I had no desire to meet anyone. That is the truth. I've been there, done that. Uh, Yushu was all I needed. Uh, but two to three years after uh, my marriage ended, I was the matron of honour at a friend's wedding in Scotland, and she was marrying a Canadian. And now our story begins. Ten Canadians came to Scotland for that wedding. Uh, one of them was Sunil. Uh, a scripture that was heavy on my heart at that very time was Jeremiah 29, 11, which I'm sure we all know. Because I know the thoughts I think about you, says Lord Jehovah the purpose of peace and not of harm, to give you hope to the end. And you shall call me and you shall pray before me. And when you will seek me from, your, from all of your heart, you shall find me, says Lord Jehovah. And as Sunil um, had come through a very similar uh, circumstances in his marriage, and he actually wrote me a letter that says, I'm interested to know if you'd like to get to know me. And I was scared, but I thought, Lord, is this my hope? It, is Sunil part of that plan? And uh, truly was. Sunil was to be part of that plan. So uh, Sunil, as he said, his marriage was very similar to what I had been through. We had a long distance courtship uh, between Canada and Scotland. Cost a lot of money in phone calls because there was no FaceTime back then. And we finally married in the year 2000. And in January 2001, myself and my two youngest children came with me to Canada. My two oldest joined us a couple of years later. So all of the kids are here in North America. Uh, Sunil himself has a daughter. So uh, we have a family, a blended family of five children. And the kids all go on magnificently together. And we have six grandchildren. But shortly after I arrived in Canada, and this is where I want to intertwine how God just weaves people into your lives. Uh, we were attending a baby dedication at a friend's home through the church that we were in at that time. And this very elderly gentleman walks in with his wife. I couldn't believe it. I recognized him immediately. It was Pastor Whiteman, the pastor that had visited that little village church in Scotland over 20 years before. I mean, what is the chance of that? Canada is so big, such a big country. I didn't at that time even have any inkling I would ever live in Canada, let alone meet this pastor again. But there we are. Coming to Canada, um, we, I attended the little church that Sunil went to, and then we moved on to a larger church in CLA. But I have struggled to find a church where I fit in. I personally don't think we need smoke machines and flashing lights to bring in the presence of God. I love live, lively praise and worship, um, but I, I felt something was just missing in the message. A piece of that puzzle again wasn't there. And last year, as we know, COVID hit, and with the church closures, and our dear friend Shelley shared that she'd found this little church that was open, Shabbat Shalom. And when she shared a little bit about some of the teaching from this kind of unknown church to me, I really felt I had to go check it out as there was something resonating with me from the past. When I came to Shabbat Shel Shalom, I felt that I was reconnecting with that missing piece of the puzzle, that, that some pieces were beginning to fit back in. I were both taking the Torah 101 class with Janet and, um, and uh, Ron. Ron, sorry. Um, I'm very excited about that discussion excited to discover more of the richness of Yeshua's word. So one last thing, you've stayed with me this long. I have to say that after my dear mom um, fully received the Lord as her personal savior and after her death, my aunt shared something with me that I didn't know, that over 60 years ago, a young American evangelist was making a visit to Glasgow, Scotland. He made two in his lifetime. I went to see him once, but this is way back Six, over 60 years ago, he visited Glasgow, Scotland, and my mum and aunt decided to go get tickets and check him out. His name was Billy Graham. After he gave his message, my mum got to her feet to go forward to receive Yeshua. But being very, very heavily pregnant, and it being a very unusually hot day in Scotland, and the lines to get down to the front were so long, she gave up and returned to her seat. The baby she was carrying was me. So I go back to that first scripture. He set me apart before I was born. 
and he called me by his grace. I believe his hand has been on all of us since we were in our mother's room, womb and even before that. And you know, whilst God had done amazing things in our new family, there was always challenges. There was always difficulties. There was always uh, something happening in the midst of uh, experiencing the power and presence of God. And in those really difficult times, God in his word, his promises, the truth of God, which is God speaking to us, our manna is what often sustains us. And, uh, and it's like we're walking on water. And uh, Isaiah 59, 1 says, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. And he continues to do that in our lives, in our children's lives, in our neighbors' lives, as we witness to them. When we go for a walk around the park where we live, you know, opportunities come. I am never shy. I will talk about Yeshua any given time. Uh, simply because when I did that in India, I had a gun to my head. I had machete swung at me. I had human feces and urine thrown at me. What's the worst that can happen in Canada? Somebody might tell me to shut up and it's okay. So I don't have an issue at all. But I go with the power and the guidance, the direction of Yeshua. And I just want to encourage all of us, no matter how strong we are, no matter how deep rooted we are, we are humans after all, and, uh, and we are subject to some of the emotions we feel, especially in these uh, pandemic times, in these end times. And as I hear and listen and come across, even amongst believers, there is fear. We cannot be guided by fear. Yeshua is on our side. We should absolutely not be worried. And so I want to encourage you all. Uh, Psalm 1611 says, you make known to me the path of life. Not just a path, the path of life. In your presence, there's fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. We needn't worry. He is here with us constantly, 24-7. Exodus 33, 14. And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And just as we rest in the Lord today, we should rest in every situation. And, uh, and Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and find me. And when you seek me with, when you seek me with all your heart, I'll, I'll say that again. Jeremiah 29, 13, when you seek me and find me, when you seek me and find me with all your heart, with all your heart, as we do that, Yeshua is available constantly. You know, what most amazing thing we found from our very lives and now that we live together and, and just, just serve God as a couple, as, a, as parents, as grandparents, uh, we just find that um, God is... We don't need to do sacrificing. We don't need to do deeds. We don't need to do all these penance and et cetera, et cetera, that's all around us. All we have to do is just have a surrendered heart. And we say, here am I, take me as I am, because the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. And you know, it's so nice to be amongst Believers that encourage us. I've, we've gotten to know some of you a little bit. Can't wait to get to know more of you in time. And we feel privileged and encouraged to be part of the body of Christ. Thank you so much for giving us a listening year. We're not pastors, so we we'll apologize if uh, <laughs> we're not speaking the way it should be. But this is our heart. This is our story, but more importantly, it is Yeshua's story. Mm -hmm. We are nothing. We're very small in this. He is everything. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And if you have questions, 
Midrash, go for it. <laughs> well, <clears throat> thank you so much, Sunil and Sheila. Uh, it just uh, it warms the heart. Uh, just such a joyful uh, experiencing the, your story um, with you. It just uh, is amazing. So I, I'm going to invite people to unmute as they wish and maybe you have other questions or uh, something that uh, encouraged you in this testimony, uh, you know, might remind you of another scripture or something, but let's, uh, let's discuss and, and go ahead. And um, I, I, I hate to keep Sunil and Sheila on the hot seat, but you never know. There might be some questions that uh, come up. Uh, I, I think um, already just your humor and good nature I, I think it was was it Simkat Torah when we or Sukkot when we did the nation's uh, dress. Oh, that was lovely. And, and <laughs> Sunil, you were in a Scottish kilt, and and Sheila in an Indian sari. And uh, you know, I, I I knew that you were Cracker Jack people. <laughs> that there was something. <laughs> so it's so nice to get to know you a little bit better. Bless you. So anyone else with? Uh, with better with better comments than Cracker Jack. <laughs> okay. Don't be shy. I, I just wanted to say thank you for what a beautiful testimony. Um, just warmed my heart. Uh, but I was curious, uh, Sunil, when did you come to Canada, and how did you end up here? Up here. Yes, it, it would be around thirty. Five, 37 years ago. 1980. Yes, yeah, so, somewhere like that. So it was just after Expo. It would have been just after Expo. Now, when I was uh, living in Calcutta at that time, uh, I was uh, part of the Assemblies of God Church in Calcutta. And there happened to be a, uh, a Canadian couple that came to see what the mission field was like and what we did. And I was... Uh, whilst I was still in college, I happened to be the guy that uh, had to take them around and show them around and help them with that. And we just got talking and uh, uh, they happened to say, hey, uh, we, we have a daughter. I think she would be very good for you. <laughs> and uh, Sight unseen. Sight unseen, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, thought, so, okay, <laughs> didn't quite give it thought because I didn't know these people at all. And, and then one thing led to the other. And, and yes, I uh, eventually agreed and married their daughter and lived in Powell River for a short while and then mm -hmm. moved out here. And then that unfortunately uh, did not work out. So, yeah, that's how. <laughs> Mm, very good and uh so it uh now when did you when did you you met at the at the the wedding in scotland and then you said long term like uh letters and, and phone calls yeah um so that so how and then how many months or years before that came all together oh Four years. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually in university. I had been a, an EA, an educational assistant, for um, in a residential school for children with very severe uh, physical needs. Um, so then I decided to become a teacher. And so I was still in university. So we just thought it made sense for me to stay and finish. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, we dated back and forward and we traveled back and forward for four years. You know, I, I have to say, uh, I'm grateful to Father God because I had, at that time, the business was very successful, mm -hmm. so I could travel a lot more. And, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, back then it was only BC Tell, for those of you that can remember BC Tell. Uh, and so they loved me as a customer because, you know, I generated <laughs> revenue. Uh, but what it did is, uh, just like Sheila had said earlier, I wanted to stay single myself because I said, Lord, I, I am yours. However you want to use me, I will. And if it means a life of singleness, that is what it is. 
Um, but then my best friend who got married to her friend uh, in Scotland, uh, it just, I, it intrigued me. I, I thought, I like this brunette with green eyes. I'm going <laughs> after her. So I did. <laughs> But it made us talk a lot. Yes. Um, I'm not, funnily enough, being a teacher, you would think I'd be really good at talking. I like talking to children, but I'm not that great with, I, I don't talk a lot to adults. <laughs> but it made us, we had to talk. Yep. And we also had to deal with um, issues of trust for both of them. Yep. Both of us. Mm -hmm. And so here we are at this great distance. We had to build up trust. And so it was actually very good because we talked for hours on end and we talked about everything under the sun. And there was a lot of communication that happened in those four years. So it was good. And we made Yeshua central yeah. to everything we did. Yeah. Not mm -hmm. minus him. Yeah. No. Nope. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So Neil, I remember you at Simcat Torah in, in that kilt. And I am all say you're a brown young laddie. I, <laughs> but I, I, wanted, I, I, I wanted to ask you, whose tartan was that? That's yeah. the that's the Cunningham tartan. That's my mother's tartan, yeah. Cunningham. Oh. It was gifted by my cousin to Sunil. So you, you know what the most amazing thing is? When we got married, that was in Scotland, on the banks of the Loch Lomond. And oh. so I, I thought to myself, you know, I can't wear a clan uh, kilt simply because you know, look at me, what part of a clan do I look? Not that. <laughs> so <laughs> I went with the flower, flower of Scotland. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the flower yeah. of Scotland, it's which is- flowery. <laughs> No, it's not flowery, it's the national anthem. So yeah. I wore that, but the most funny and amazing thing was uh, a lot of the Scottish people were looking and when I would open my mouth, they'd go, the accent doesn't match the outfit <laughs> and the skin color doesn't match the outfit. <laughs> it, it messed people up, but hallelujah, it started a conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, when Marta and I were married, uh, Marta was, was welcomed into the clan McPherson. McPherson? Yes. Yeah, and, uh, and, and, I went. and she has the, uh, has a, uh, the flower mm -hmm. of Scotland. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> and, so, and, and when she went uh, teaching, and her name then became Marta Archibald, they said that the, your name doesn't match your accent. <laughs> <laughs> the same, same. same thing. And not the ones. <laughs> but, but I do have one story of a Cunningham. Mm. Uh, the college where I went and also Bob and Rosemary uh, went. Uh, the, years ago, the Dean of Women was Mrs. Cunningham. And uh, she would have an interview with the, the, the ladies of the college. And she would ask them, why are you here? Why did you come to Bible school? And they would, some of them were honest enough to say, well, to find a husband. And she said, well, why would you want one of those? <laughs> so so she, she was trying to get the girls to, you know, get serious about <laughs> serving the Lord and not just look for a husband. Anyway, that's, that's on the side. That's my Cunningham story. <laughs> Here's another, a shortened version of the name Cunningham, Sly Bacon. Oh. Cunning <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. Well, now we'll we'll we'll, we'll move right along from the Scottish jokes here. <laughs> but maybe maybe I'll maybe I'll tell you one more. You know what's the best thing that came out of Edinburgh? The road to the road to Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's enough. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, folks. We're 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 digressing here. <laughs> Anyone else that can that can rescue this a little bit? I went to an office party once, and we had a whole group of people. Some of them were from Scotland, and we had these other people, and they were Chinese. So we decided to put on. And Robbie Burns Day was coming up, and Chinese New Year was coming up, so we called it Haggis Bok Choy. <laughs> oh, <that's terrible. laughs> oh my well and our resident scott is alan mcleod he's yes, the, sir. He, he's the <laughs> resident scott in the well and now now you have some company you've got sheila yeah <laughs> sheila <laughs> Still, uh, uh, sheila whereabouts were you uh, born in scotland 
Glasgow. I'm Glasgow. My my ancestors came from uh, uh, Moni Ive and and Iron Grey and uh, Auchen Cairn and Dundrennan on the Solway. Yeah, I know where that is. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I came from the poor part of Glasgow. <laughs> 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 oh dear. I've been in I've been in Glasgow several times. Well. <laughs> so Ron, uh, <laughs> do you wanna do wanna do you wanna bring this back to something? Rescue it, rescue it. <laughs> Other than <laughs> Oh dear. I think Alan McCann a little, a little that note. Scotland's biggest export is Scots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, as a little note, we, we were in Edinburgh um, and uh, I was looking for either a Watson plaid, which is a which is Septus for a, a Buchanan, or a Campbell. So I finally found an ancient Campbell tie. It was new, but it was from ancient Campbell. And I put it on and walked up the ramp to the Edinburgh Castle. When I got to the uh, top level, uh, there was a chap there taking tickets. And uh, I went to him and said, oh, he said, it looks like you're wearing black, uh, uh, what? Um, black watch. Black watch? Black watch, yeah. But he, says, he says, I know. It's the Royal Stuart. I see I've got a Campbell tie on. I wouldn't <laughs> wear that, Ron, if I were you. <laughs> and I said, I'll wear it as long as I like. <laughs> and we didn't we parted not company oh well there you go yeah, now you uh, can't stop yeah, you can't just, stop 258 years of hatred all of a sudden oh, you know well you sure can uh yeah. <laughs> now sunil you had you had uh grown up in calcutta yes a small part of my life was in calcutta yeah uh where else where else in india were you oh i i was uh i also I, I was born in a place called Bareilly, and the way you will associate that place is Mrs. Indira Gandhi was born there. So that's uh -huh. the famous prime minister that most of the world knows. Mm -hmm. um, and then I lived in a place called uh, Dalhousie. Dalhousie is about nine and a half thousand, no, eight and a half thousand uh, feet above sea level. And so it's on the Himalayan mountains, lots of snow in the winter time. I know when I first came to Canada and people would say, snow? I thought it was always hot. No, it's, it's, it's got four seasons and it's got mountains and it's got heat. So it has all of that. And, and then I also lived in a place called Shimla, again on the uh, Himalayan mountain range. Uh, so those are the places I lived. So oh. That must so be beautiful. Mother. Sorry? That must be beautiful like the mountains and what you, yeah. is, uh, you know, have that. It's it like be being in nice. Whistler, <laughs> except the mountains are taller. Mm -hmm. Sunil yeah. has yeah. also met Mother Teresa. He's, he yeah. sat on her knee. Yep, as a young boy, knew her very well, very personally. My mother uh, used to run the Cheshire Homes. Cheshire Homes was started by group captain Leonard Cheshire, who was the observer pilot when Nagasaki and Hiroshima got bombed, when he saw the destruction of the atomic bomb, he felt he could not just stand by <clears throat> and not do anything. So he dedicated his life into uh, helping people, mostly girls in, in, back then it was called the third world. Uh, and, and so the homes were open for young ladies, girls with disabilities of all kinds, because as mm -hmm. you know, culturally, a girl almost has no value. Unfortunately, it still happens today. Uh, but so we would take, or my mother would, sorry, take uh, these uh, young ladies. So we would uh, go to Mother Teresa and uh, take um, girls and uh, help them rehabilitate them. The good news mm. was they got to know Yeshua my mother made sure they knew you, Yeshua. Good, <laughs> good, good. Amen. So, uh, do you still remember the, the, the Mother Therese? Yes, very, very well. Um, extremely soft-spoken. I have yet to come across a human being so humble. I, I've never come across 
anyone like her, but genuinely caring. Like when she engaged with you, she saw you Mm -hmm. and just you were the world in front of her, nothing else. It didn't matter her notoriety and all the things she did. She she was wonderful, wonderful (coughs) lady. Um, And uh, yeah, that was a nice privilege in life. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'm, I'm curious about your adoption. Is, is there a story behind that? I, it's, it's, it's very long, but I'll condense it. Um, my parents, so I, I have to say it this way. My parents, or at least my father, was extremely wealthy man. Adopted parents. Adopted parents. So they were very wealthy people. We lived with a lot of privilege when we were there or till, till such time my father left oh. us. So they couldn't have children, but there's a lot of mysterious circumstances, which it's only recently, as in January of this year, I've been trying to figure out who are my adopted parents. Yeah, uh, no, not from my uh, family of my adopted parents. Who are my real parents? What were the circumstances? Why? Uh, Lots of roadblocks, (laughs) lots of I don't knows. So I, uh, you know, it's a journey I'll, uh, I'll take, uh, but in the process, I want Yeshua to be exalted because mm-hmm. I could have been that statistic <laughs> begging in the street. And you know what? <laughs> I did drugs. I was in a gang. I did all that nonsense too. But because the seed was planted and I accepted Yeshua as my personal savior, I'm the statistics for the right reasons. And so if in this journey, it means one day I can go to India and maybe figure out and um, it'll be great. If not, I guess we'll meet in heaven. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Amen. You know, I, I, I think of, you know, the psalmist saying, uh, you know, how the Lord formed him knit knit me together in my mother's womb and as, as Sheila as you as, had mentioned about even you know your mother carrying you going forward in a Billy Graham crusade and Sunil from childhood and all the things you went through the Lord you know had his hand on every aspect and just the intricacy of the lord's bringing us and we all we all have stories like this the intricacy of how the lord arranges Mm -hmm. and and Mm -hmm. sets the horizons of our lives you know the the sovereignty of god is not is not something to to you know bristle under it's something to just absolutely enjoy and realize what Mm -hmm. a wonder it is how he's brought us and and the the details of our lives to bring us to himself. Mm -hmm. It's just an amazing, I'm always amazed at his his amazing grace. Amen. And you know, if I I can share this to encourage everyone, uh, we were, we're a young youth group that decided to uh, use whatever little talent we had to go out and, and, and serve Yeshua. And we went to a place called Nagaland. Nagaland in India mm-hmm. borders Burma, which are now called Myanmar. And you have Bhutan, the happiest country in the world, or their GDP is happiness. Uh, and then you have China, so it's in that area. But way near, back then- Near uh, the Bene Menasha. Sorry? Near the Bene Menasha. Okay. The, the Benny Menasha, yeah. Benny oh. Menasha. Oh, yeah, yeah. Benny Menasha. So as as I was saying, I um, we 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 went there, and this would have been in, you know, up until the sixties, these folks were cannibals, <clears throat> and uh, the gospel was brought in, uh, you know, through many missionaries and and and, and a lot of sacrifice and, and a lot of victories. But when you go to the city, they have a big sign. And I don't know if it's there. It says, we were headhunters. Now we're God hunters. So it takes Mm. one person's simple faith, not complicated. Faith is not complicated at all. We complicate faith. Simple. 
trusting in him, letting Yeshua do his business because he's in the business of change. We're in the business of listening and doing what he tells us and a nation can change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. (laughs) Sunil, Sunil, I wonder, is it possible, would you have ever uh, come across a, a, a very fine Christian in in India called Vishal, Vishal Mangalwadi. No, uh, the name is familiar, but I've not come across him. He uh, he spoke to us uh, several times at the Missions Fest conference in Vancouver, um, and he was just a, a, a wonderful speaker, very very deep in the things of the Lord. Amen. And he was a, he was the leader of a community of Christians in India. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, it's what a what a wonderful you know time to have with you, and uh, we want to pray for you for Sunil and Sh- Sheila, and uh, you know it's just been really in the last uh, few months, actually the last year that you know we we even come to know you. I remember when you first came, and how do you remember your name? And you told me, well, it's Linus spelled backwards, and then I spent months trying to think Linus, Linus, now it's in the- <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, uh, but you know, just uh, you know, there, there's people that you feel like you've always known, and I don't know h- how that is, but you, you, you know, even though you, they come into your life just within weeks, but you feel like well, we must have known you know, for months or years or whatever, but uh, you know, I think this is a, one of the secrets of Shabbat Shal Shalom is that it really is family. It just is, um, you know, uh, I don't know what it is, except that uh, it just is a lot of family people that just, I think it's a vulnerability. It's that we're willing to be, just be who we are. What you see is what you get. And and that's the the joy of it. And so thank you for sharing who you are and uh, what a joy. So we do want to, encourage you and and pray for you i'm just wondering if there's anyone else today that has a prayer request um also uh debbie how is uh, ron um if you can unmute um debbie ron, ron was supposed to drop by and tell you himself so uh okay. i'm not sure where he is um he said that this group meets at the same time as as food so Ah, so well, if we're competing. Yeah, so I, but I, I said just, just say hello. So I'm not sure. Maybe he fell asleep. I don't know. There, let's see, three, four, five. It's only six o'clock there, so I don't know. Okay, well, but uh, I, I do see his his postings on Facebook, and uh, it's still very positive. So yeah, yeah, well, Good. it is. Is he's got to figure out what to do with his time because the program there is not very, it's not very developed at all. There's a lot of downtime and it's, it doesn't seem like those people are being well served. So he has to figure it out mm. what to do with his extra time that he has. Oh, wow. There's stuff to do. Believe me, I don't think he has going to have that much figuring because <laughs> it's just yeah. stuff he doesn't want it to. Oh dear. <laughs> We'll see. I don't know. I'm speaking for somebody else, Barry, so I don't know. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> and um, is Cassie still with us? Yes, yes. Cassie. How are you doing? If you can unmute and uh, let us know how you're doing. Well, hello, all my precious family. I'm doing really good. I've um, I've, I've just been doing everything I can to strengthen and uh I've been able to take uh, more um, um, concentrated supplements um, because I finished my treatment and uh, my doctor has been extremely uh, positive in that I have uh, have made remarkable strides. Uh, any of you that know anything about cancer, my cancer mark was at a seven when I finished and she was the one that told me the oncologist that uh, the um, 
what is in a normal rage is uh, 30. Uh, so um, that was really encouraging to Ron and I. And we have just continued to, to praise God because I entered into this um, treatment. It, it really uh, wasn't just for uh, the cancer. It was for the fact that my lung had gone up and ha had stayed scrunched when it, when it was in, a, when there was water in and around my lungs. And um, that has since come down because they said that that would happen with this uh, treatment. Plus the, the, um, um, the uh, blood clot that I had on my lung uh, is also gone. So that was a praise report. Plus my heart, which had uh, trouble with all the things that it had to endure within such a short time has now been completely healed. And then um, my abdominal uh, area where I had the total hysterectomy and the mass uh, off the ovary removed has has come into alignment and has been is in really really good health as well so it was such a praise report and and not only that but the people that God gave me to talk to in the in the midst of it all you know I I just was able to realize that this was not the normal um mm, uh, maybe the wrong word but I just knew that this journey was a very special one and that there were going to be lives that were going to be touched because Yeshua's light was going to shine forth from me and sure enough in my weakness he did he showed up and this is not just um this is not just a victory uh of, of God in my life and, and, and restoring me to complete health. But this is a victory for all those who entered in and prayed for me because God showed me how he used each and every one of those prayers to, um, to sustain me and to suspend me before the, his throne of grace. And so I just, I just walk in such knowledge of, you know, just knowing that God is who he says he is, you know, like he, he can't change one word that comes out of his mouth. So when he says he is the God that heals you, that is exactly what he does. And so I just thank God that he helped me get out of the way too. We can be our, we can be our own worst enemies, but he just really, um, I don't know what to, how to say it, but just wrapped his arms around me and sustained me with your prayers. And so I share this because it is a victory for all those who entered in as well. So thank you for asking and thank you for letting me share. I really, I, I just walk on air these days. <laughs> you know, that, that's wonderful, uh, Cassie. I'm going to ask Brenda if you would offer a prayer of, of thanks and, and praise for what God has done in Kathy's life. Yes, thank you. Oh, Father, I rejoice with Kathy as did the rest of us for your faithfulness, your goodness, and that indeed you are the Lord that heals. And Father, I thank you that you have undergirded her, surrounded her, you've sustained her during this time, and that she is coming forth as a mighty woman of God. And Lord, we see we see your mighty hand upon her in every way. We thank you, Lord, because it encourages us. It, it builds us up to see what you're doing in Kathy's life. And we give you the glory in every way. Amen. 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 And so if you would offer prayer for Debbie's husband, Ron, he's in Ontario still with, in, in the treatment. And also that with the downtime that he has at, the Lord would uh, use that even to speak to his heart. So if you would remember Debbie's husband, Ron Zolt, please. Yeah, yeah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Yeshua, we're gathering today. We thank you, Father, with your blessing. We are all here today, and we are your children. And Father, in the name of Yeshua, we all pray for Ron, our brother, your son. 
Father, bless him with healing, bless him with your Holy Spirit and guide him and hold his hand and guide his step mm -hmm. and show him to the right path and bless him with wisdom and knowledge and discernment in yeah. your Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and carry him under your wing through this, to this time of the, the challenging time for him and his family. Mm -hmm. Father, we surrender to you. We trust you. As our brother Sunil say, we pray that you taking care from here, from now on, you lead us. So lead our brother, uh, brother Ron, to the right path. Show him, show him the light, show him, show him the way, and bless him with a healing. In Yeshua, we all pray. Amen. 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 And I'm going to ask uh, Samuel, are you still on? Mm. Let's see. I have to swipe here. Um, okay. Well, how about we have... Um, yes, Samuel. No, yeah, Samuel. There you are. <laughs> I'm swiping and here we find. Uh, would you offer a prayer of thanks for Sunil and Sheila? Uh, these that have shared with us today and just um, that God would work in their, continue to work in their lives. Samuel, if you would lead us in a, in thanks to God for Sunil and Sheila. Mighty and everlasting Father, we give you praise. We give you thanks for your mercies and goodness in our lives. You are the Alpha and Omega. You are the giver of life. You are the first and the last and you are the beginning and the end. You are the almighty God and we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor, we give you all the praise. We thank you for the life of our brother Sunil and the wife, Father Lord Jesus Christ, for the testimony that they've shared with us today. And uh, mighty God, we give you all the glory because it is your story. It is your story of redemption. It is your story of restoration. It is your story of victory, mighty Father Lord Jesus, which we, your children, go through in each and every way in of our lives, Father Lord God, and a continuing process which you guide us through everlasting Father. Father Lord Jesus Christ, we lift them up unto you. Father Lord Jesus, we exalt your families. We lift them up unto you, your children and their grandchildren, your businesses, their community. Mighty Father Lord Jesus Christ, continue to make them a light. Father Lord Jesus, to their fellowship, continue to be a light within their community. Father Lord Jesus Christ, and let them shine, mighty Father Lord, as you have called your children, that you should be a light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. May their lives continue to be a guiding light to others. Father Lord, to know that it is your story that is being written in our lives. And it's about us yielding ourselves to the influence of your Holy Spirit. And it's less about us, but it's more about you, mighty and everlasting Father. So may their story continue to, uh, the seed that you've sown in our hearts, may it continue to grow. Water it, mighty Father Lord Jesus Christ, that we will all be able to fill and be able to yield ourselves to the power of your Holy Spirit, to use us within our communities, and in each little way to transform our society and our community, mighty Father. So we pray that, Father Lord, your story in their life is not complete. Mighty God, we still have work to do with them. We still have work to use them to do in our community, even in our fellowship, Shabbat Shalom, Messianic Fellowship. So, Father Lord, we ask you that you fulfill their heart desires. You fulfill mm -hmm. their heart wishes. You yeah. fulfill their wishes for their children and their grandchildren. You fulfill, mighty God, but they desire to see up to you, to see you fulfill in their life, mm -hmm. my God, that their influence and their friendship and their joy that we share with them will continue to share each and every time. And when the opportunity comes for us to meet, we will all celebrate with love and joy to the honor and glory of your name, to your son, Yeshua, Hamashiach, the living Torah and the light. We pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you all, each and every one. And I want to encourage you, you know, we see each other um, on Zoom. Uh, this morning, we had the time in the park. Uh, do connect phone calls, cards, uh, emails, uh, you know, texting, whatever. Do connect with each other during the week and with, uh, you know, uh, with others in our congregation. Uh, we, there are people that are lonely, that are feeling isolated and just you know if if the lord brings someone to mind to pray let them know that because they don't know that they've been prayed for necessarily so if the lord brings someone to mind to pray do let them know uh you know the lord put your put you on my heart today and i just want you to know that uh he's caring for you people need words of encouragement these days so just be encouraged that way 
uh, lovely to see everyone um, just be blessed in every way. And before I, 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 I steal all of Ron's thunder, <laughs> I think we'll have, we'll have him just give that ironic blessing. And uh, thank you, Ron, if you would. Yehovah, Panavaleka, Vekuneka, Yisa, Yehovah, Panav Eleka, Vesem Leka, Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give to you his shalom. Amen.